It was here at Valley Forge that men were trained from ragged colonists to professional soldiers, and able to defeat their oppressive enemy, the British. The only battle here was between man and himself. Was he willing to combat the cold? To persevere through the harshest winter the 18th century had seen? To toughen up because of the fresh snow that fell softly but persistently across the land? To wrap rags around his feet? To feel the cold penetrate through the ratty fabric and make his feet bleed? To build fires in a city of 2,000 log cabins and do his best to stay warm? To push through the cold wind and realize his cause of fighting for independence was more important than the pain he was going through? The soldier said, yes, sir. A group of ragged men were able to defeat the mighty redcoats. The colonists made them look not so mighty, and their goal, what they were willing to lay down their lives for, was achieved. The soldiers in Valley Forge were not forgotten. They were celebrated, recognized. Over 100 years after their encampment in 1893, Valley Forge became a state park. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania created the Valley Forge Park Commission, whose cause was to preserve, improve, and maintain as a public park the site on which General George Washington's army encamped at Valley Forge. It was an essential victory. Even 200 years after, it became Valley Forge National Historical Park. On July 4, 1976, it was America's bicentennial, and Pennsylvania gave this gift on America's 200th birthday. It was a true celebration. Fireworks exploded in the sky. Onlookers smiled at the bright lights. The park exists in peace today. It stretches many miles. The grass is endless. It is scattered across rolling fields. The birds chirp in the morning, calling out for a mate. Their bodies small, yet their call triumphant like ringing gongs. The wind rustles the grass to sway in the breeze, back and forth. The grass asks no questions. It does as the wind tells it to. The clouds clear to let the sunlight shine down upon a sanctuary. The river flows and water quietly brushes against the banks. It streams down in the same pattern over the rocks, slowly but surely wearing them away. The trees stretch high. They are proud and magnificent, some lonely while others are close together. They provide shade over the many paths in the park. The dogwoods, the maples, and the oaks grow in Valley Forge, pure and innocent in springtime. Their leaves blossom and fill the park with light. Some trees felt the cold winter in Washington's time. They shivered but did not panic. Others were chopped down and used to house the soldiers and fuel their fires. The cement paths stretch a total of 26 long miles. There is the Schuylkill Trail, which meanders all the way to Philadelphia, which bikers will ride. But the most famous miles of the park are the Loop. It is titled the Joseph Plum Martin Trail. Five magnificent miles begin at the Welcome Center and extend through the park to end back at its beginning. All modes of transportation are used on this path. From young married couples with newborns in strollers, to white-haired women enjoying a walk, to joggers and bikers getting their exercise. The joggers and bikers race around the loop. They lace up their sneakers and push themselves to a maximum. They remember the strength that the soldiers had nearly 200 years before. They derive strength from the park and are able to push themselves to levels beyond their own imagination. The deer in Valley Forge wander through high grass. The does and fawns graze innocently. Their intentions are harmless. They have large eyes and soft tails like a new puppy. Populating the park in vast numbers, they live their lives in peace. General Anthony Wayne sits high upon his horse as a monument and a symbol for his service of being a United States general. He was one of the men who endured that difficult winter, and he is honored with a secluded and quiet spot in the park. He sits overlooking an empty field, wearing a round hat and a straight face. Lead me forward, his words read on a plaque at the base of his statue. The most memorable site in Valley Forge is its mighty monument. It has stood in the park since its completion in 1917. It stands quite simply, surrounded by benches, sidewalks, and an American flag. Just the arch's appearance is enough to make any visitor gaze at it. At the top of the monument marks the words of the great General Washington. They read, Naked and starving as they are, 
we cannot enough admire the incomparable patience and fidelity of the soldiery. Those words capture Washington's passion for his soldiers and how he never gave up on them. The elements of battle still exist as models today. The cannons are lonely and scattered about the park. They are fired only on occasion to represent the firings of so many years ago. Some sit below trees, finding relief from the shade with wheels ready to make the cannon mobile, while some others stand guard outside of the chapel. The stone buildings of the chapel overlook a field of green grass and some of the jogging path. The size of the buildings vary in height. One nearly scrapes the sky, while the other sits plainly. The stone is gray and rough. Worshippers are welcome at the chapel on Sundays. The bells from the chapel still ring on Sunday mornings. They ring during the time where the sun hits the trees at the perfect angle. Their loud and triumphant sound are the bells of freedom. And good morning, I'm James Connors. And I'm Mary Bridget Kane. Welcome and, to Mainline Morning. Uh, today we have a very special guest. What you were just looking at was a documentary that I made last year for my Writer's Craft class. It was a documentary on Valley Forge Park. And today we have a very special guest from Valley Forge Park. We have Mike Caldwell, who is the park superintendent. Welcome to the show. Good Mike? morning. Mr. Caldwell. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for coming out today. Um, so now you're the superintendent of Valley Forge Park, but when did you first know that you wanted to uh, work in national parks? My dad was a park ranger at Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado, and so uh, growing up uh, both there as well as in Alexandria, Virginia, I was about five miles from Mount Vernon uh, mm -hmm. in, where George Washington lived. So I knew I liked history, uh, I liked the outdoors, mm -hmm. and I also wanted to be in public service. So I guess fairly early on I knew I wanted to work for the federal government um, but I really started to work for the National Park Service right out of college mm -hmm. and have really enjoyed a, about an 18 year career now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you went to college at the University of Colorado right. and then got your master's in public administration right. from George, um, George Mason. That's Can right. you tell us a little bit about the public sure. administration? Sure. Well when I, uh, I got my undergraduate degree in political science and history mm -hmm. um, even though People might tell uh, you all or other students who major in those things, you'll never get a job. But um, I held out hope. I did get a job. And then I found out once I started to work for the Park Service, uh, when you become a manager, you deal with budget, you deal with personnel stuff. And so public administration, it's kind of like a business administration degree, but mm -hmm. for the public sector. And um, a lot of economics, a lot of uh, finance stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of human resources things. So it's similar to a business degree, just focused on public sector, mm -hmm. um, the public sector environment. Mm -hmm. Now you've worked all across the country. You've worked in Virginia, you've worked in Maryland, you've worked in Washington, D.C. And that was all before you came to Valley Forge in 2005. What was your favorite job before you came to Valley Forge? Well, I'll say that my favorite job right now is Valley Forge. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a, it's a, I've been here almost five years. It's a wonderful place to work. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of favorite job before then, I would say the summer of my, before I was a sophomore in college, I worked at Mesa Verde National Park, mm -hmm. which is in south, southwest Colorado. Um, it's the home to these ancient ruins called cliff, uh, cliff dwellings. And I was put in charge of a campground there. Mm -hmm. And so I was 19 supervising uh, 60 and 65 year old, uh, mostly guys <laughs> who were World War II vets and they were great. Um, it was a challenge, it was busy but I learned a lot about people. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing, one lesson that I've learned in, in all my jobs is you have issues you deal with, but there's always the people side of things. And I think so from early on, um, from a manager's point of view, learning how to interact, discuss, talk, get over conflict with people has just been a huge skill. And, and really, I started to learn that early on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you said that Valley Forge is your favorite job. Yep. Obviously, it's really exciting coming to a park with so much you know, natural history. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, most people 
associate Valley Forge with George Washington and the American Revolution and the winter encampment. And we'll let the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully something's not going on in the park. Uh, uh, all right, there they go. There <laughs> but mo so most people associate with the, uh, the winter of 1777 and 78, mm -hmm. uh, where 20,000 of our troops uh, encamped there while the British had invaded uh, Philadelphia. But, and Valley Forge became the first state park in Pennsylvania history in 1893. But fast forward to today, 2009, mm -hmm. we have 3,500 acres. Mm -hmm. We have 12 buildings in the park that were there when George Washington was there. Mm -hmm. We have another 150 buildings that we own and operate. Uh, not Certainly uh, not all of them uh, were from the American Revolution. So there's, there's a lot that goes into Valley Forge uh, behind the scenes. And really, the park now has 30 miles of trails. A lot of folks like yourselves, your parents, they come to the park and jog or bike, um, walk around. And so we have a lot of other issues besides uh, keeping our history alive. We mm -hmm. have a lot of natural resources issues, um, such as things that affect Valley Creek. Valley Creek's a great place to go fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an overabundance of white-tailed deer, which mm -hmm. this past week uh, many of your viewers may have read in the paper about our white-tailed deer plan. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that go on, which really makes it for an interesting job. Mm -hmm. when I, when I appear at places, people see the ranger uniform. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that maybe I'm out patrolling and keeping, you know, bears from picnic baskets or something <laughs> like that. But a lot of my job is spent behind the scenes um, doing a lot of different things every day. So it really mm -hmm. makes it enjoyable. All right. Well, we have Alex Nofer, our Phillies expert, uh, prepared to talk about some sports. Alex, the Phillies unfortunately lost yesterday. Uh, yeah, it was a sad day for Philadelphia. Uh, Phillies lost five to four, and the uh, Rockies tied the series one to one. That's about all I had to say about that. Angels beat the Red Sox for the first time in the playoffs in a long time, as this is like the third or fourth year they faced each other in a row. Blackie had a great performance. Uh, the Cardinals lost to the Dodgers yesterday. They blew it in the ninth inning with a Matt Holiday error, and now they're down two to nothing to the Dodgers, which I never thought would happen. And I guess now back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Alex. We're back here with Mr. Caldwell. Uh, now, Mr. Caldwell, I do know that um, one of the common misconceptions about Valley Forge is that there was never actually a battle fought there. It was merely just a place to train soldiers. Right. That's correct. Uh, it was a place that the Continental Army encamped for six months. Mm -hmm. They did uh, training. They camped so that they were at least within reach of the British mm -hmm. uh, who were camped in, in, uh, in Philadelphia. And the big thing about Valley Forge is, is the army uh, that came out of that encampment survived and, and really lived to fight another day.